Hi everybody and welcome back to the Crowd and Redneck channel. Today I want to show you how to make venison pepper sticks, or as we call them in Germany, Pfefferweiser. We will talk about the curing process and I will show you how to cold smoke meat. Here's a list of the ingredients we will need. As usual, you find the same list below and of course on the Crowd and Redneck website. My name is Holger Holgersen and I'm the Kraut in Kraut and Redneck. Everybody who has lived in Europe or spent some considerable time there knows there's one thing that makes you want to come back over and over again. It's that incredible heritage and knowledge about sausages, prosciuttos, pâtés, rillettes and all these wonderful things you can find when you enter a butchery. As a dedicated hunter and homesteader, I want to show you how to make your own charcuterie from all the wonderful meats you bring to your table. Today we're going to make wild game Pfefferbeiser. Pfefferbeiser are basically cold smoked pepper sticks, or some people refer to them as snack sticks. They are a wonderful and savory snack for in between, and trust me, they don't last very long in my household. We will use venison, pork shoulder and pork belly. We can also substitute the pork shoulder with meat from a wild boar. Here in America, we just have to make sure the wild boar has been processed appropriately and is healthy and safe. The spice blend is pretty straightforward. We'll find two different kinds of peppers, paprika, mustard seeds, mace, some caraway, which makes it very German, and of course, garlic and onion powder. If you happen to have it in your pantry, you can blend some sweet Hungarian paprika with some hot paprika. In addition to our sea salt, we will need some Instacure number no. 1, or also called Proc Powder number no. 1. Instacure is a curing salt and makes sure that there's no bacteria growing in the process of the sausage making. Depending on how long we are going to cure meats, we either need Instacure number no. 1 or number no. 2. It is very important that you never use the wrong Instacure. The amount of Instacure we need depends on the weight of the meat. Here is the general formula of the Instacure to meat ratio. Curing meats is not hard, but you always want to be safe. If you're not sure about what you're doing, consult somebody who can help you. Besides brown sugar, we will also add a little bit of citric acid. Traditionally, German butchers add some pear brandy. This may be hard to find here in the US, so a good whiskey or rum would also do the job. One of the most important things when we process meat for sausages is the temperature of the meat. We want it to be as cold as possible. I personally like to cut the meat in strips that fit into my meat grinder and then freeze them for about an hour or two in the freezer. Take your time. If you have to grind meat a second pass, make sure that the meat gets back down to a semi-frozen state. Spices have way more punch when you toast them in a cast iron skillet to release the essential oils. We will do this here with the two peppers and also with the mustard seeds. In a sausage like Pfefferbeiser, you want to have the peppercorns and the mustard seeds not completely ground. You want to have a little thing to bite on. So it's a good idea to crush the peppers with a mortar and pestle and leave the little mustard seeds whole. The general steps are pretty easy. Make sure you cool down your meat. In the meantime, blend all the spices, combine with the crushed pepper and mustard seeds and then you start grinding the meat. Pfefferbeiser require a coarse grind of the meat. Personally, I find the fat could actually be ground a little bit finer. If you don't want to have big chunks of fat, I would recommend to do a second medium grind with the fat. It's very important that the spices and especially the salts and the Instacure are distributed evenly throughout all the meat. In order to do so, there are different concepts. Some people like to dust all the chunks of meat with a spice mix and then grind them. I personally like to grind the meats in layers, distribute spices, salt and Instacure evenly on each layer and then work them in with my hands. When you knead the ground meat, pay attention to the texture. It needs to become tacky. Make sure the meat is still cold enough before you start to put it into the sausage casings. We're using 17mm casings. 
Sheep casings can be very challenging for a beginner, so I would recommend to use collagen casings. When all the casings are filled, twist them off to your desired length. Hang them in a cool and dry place for two days at about 50 degrees. Now it's time to crank the cold smoke generator in smoke or pfeffer visors. I have gone through a couple of different cold smoke generators. Neither one is perfect, they all have their pros and cons. I do like the cold smoke generator Bella of smoking it. Against common belief, you actually do not need a lot of smoke coming out of your cold smoke generator. Way more important is a low temperature and a steady flow over 8 to 10 hours. Due to the fact that cold smoke is wet, wood pellets tend to clog up after a couple of hours. Especially if you're smoking through the night, it can be pretty frustrating if you wake up in the morning and the smoke had stopped several hours ago. I like a smoker that gives me peace of mind, keeps the temperature low and is easy to work. As fuel, I like to use a blend of 50% pellets and 50% small wood chips. I really like fruity woods. In Europe, beech wood is the choice number one. It's pretty hard to find here. Cold smoking should happen between 50 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold smoke is a wet smoke. It penetrates the meat way better and way longer than a hot smoke. Cold smoking is an essential technique for a lot of charcuterie. Ideally, the output temperature of a cold smoke generator should be below 70 degrees. In addition, you can put ice cubes into your smoking cabinet to keep the temperature down. I personally like to utilize days when it's nice and close to freezing outside. This will guarantee a perfect temperature for your smoking process. Depending on your preference, how smoky the sausages taste, I recommend to do three passes of eight hours. In between, the sausages have to rest in a fridge or in the smoking cabinet if it's cold enough outside for about 12 hours. When you're done with the smoking process, the pfeffer bicer should dry for a couple of days. The length of the drying time depends solely on how firm you want the sausages to be. I like mine to be chewy and not too soft. Oh man, I have to say, these are beyond good. They are incredibly insane. I had to crack a good IPA this morning and just try them. The combo is perfect. These Pfefferbeiser venison snack sticks, they have just the right amount of salt. They have all the spices, the smoke. They have the right amount of heat from the hot paprika on the finish. And they are just so addictive. I will have to quit eating right now, otherwise I get in big trouble with my family. Trust me. I know for sure these will be eaten in no time, even in your household. However, if you want to store them, do it in the fridge. If you want to store them for a longer time, I would suggest vacuum sealing them and you can also freeze them. We really hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed cooking for you guys. Feel free to ask questions in the comment box below. We also like some love from you guys, so like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to check out the Kraut and Redneck website. We're extremely passionate about what we're doing. There's a whole bunch of other information to the dish and also stories and anecdotes how we found it. We sincerely hope to see you again soon. Here's a big howl from the soup hound of Kraut and Redneck. Die Toten fliegen zerdrückt in einem Glas. Mancher findet's krankhaft, doch mir macht's einfach Spaß. Ich spioniere vom Keller bis zum Dach. Kenn die Intrigen, das ganze Rattenpack. Ich hab gesoffen, gehurt und randaliert. Hab jede Droge bis zum Exzess probiert.